Hello and blessed be. Welcome back to our shopping channel, your one-stop shop for all magical goods. In today's episode, we have a very special offering for you in the form of this heathen hamper, filled to the brim with all manner of mystical merchandise so curl up in front of your hearth and conjure yourself a cup of apple mead while we peruse this wonderful selection. Our basket in question is woven from witch elm, grown in the black forests of Germany. It has a wonderful sturdiness to it, making it the ideal basket for foraging in the woods or carrying hearty picnics in the graveyard. Up at the top, you'll see this green colored fabric, which is hewn of Egyptian papyrus. Believed to embody youth and vigor and give this basket an unusual ability to extend the freshness of any victuals placed inside. Let's take a closer look at the contents, shall we? First, we have this rare find, simply named the Light of Relaya, and carved this misty blue sphere of twisted wax hails from the town of Innsmouth. Little is known about this mysterious seaside town or its residents only adding to the mystery of its exports. Just three of these candles are said to exist. However, the location of the other two is as of yet unknown. It is said the owner may experience auditory hallucinations when the candle is lit, as well as a sort of cosmic dread. Legend has it that when the three candles are united and lit, under the correct constellations, that the dawn of a new age will rise. Up next, we have this hand-sewn scarf from the town of Blossom Birch. This beautiful scarf features soft blush roses scattered around the border with pink riddle berries scattered about between them. Riddle berries are infamous for their ability to cause the consumer 
to speak only in riddles until one is able to be solved. White gardenia got the four corners. Furling tenderly in amongst the sprigs of wild lying lily. These can be useful when in the presence of those you do not trust, as they need only breathe the sweet pollen to be rendered unable to lie until the next full moon. Coming inward, you'll see four double crescents in the corners as it can be seen in the sky on the night of our summer solstice in the center as well sits a full moon with a crescent on either end The waxing, full, and waning moon, representing the three phases of a witch's journey. Maiden, embodying birth, youth, expansion, and growth. Mother, Embodying fertility, stability, and power, and crone. Embodying wisdom, knowledge, and ultimately death. However, with the availability of immortal charms and potions these days, death is less likely. A band of thin gold forms a protective circle around the center, with crescents stretching out in either direction, with tiny stars and moons dotted about here and there. This scarf can be worn in the hair a variety of ways or around the neck. The fabric was sewn together under the light of a blush moon, imbuing it with powerful feminine energy, which the wearer may find increases confidence, beauty, and gives a sort of aura to the skin, as if showered with moonlight. Up next, we have this wonderful little addition, sent in by Crypt Couture, titled Draw of a Dracul. This box is crimson tones and blood splattered texture are of course a signature aesthetic choice for the company in question truly embodying their nocturnal origins. Inside, perched as if in flight, sit these two obsidian bat cufflinks with etchings of palladium linework. It's very hard to see, but there are in fact some flecks of red still left on the wingtips. As this is in fact an antique set, and as such comes with some history. This set 
can be worn as cufflinks, brooches, or collar tips to add a sense of dark allure to any dress shirt. These accessories are guaranteed to attract your desires, not only by appearance, but from the almost unearthly charm said to accompany the wearer. Though, be advised, some have also reported sanguinarian tendencies, often resulting in acts of unprovoked violence towards humans. Up next, we have the Scarab of Capri. Though of obvious Egyptian origin, this box was in fact unearthed in the Amazon when an ancient pyramid was discovered by accident beneath the immense foliage. The box itself is painted with rich turquoise and deep blue, which contrast beautifully with the gold detail work. Hieroglyphics can be seen around the base of the box, however, these appear to be different than the ones found in Egypt leading to a variety of theories about their true origins. On the lid, you'll see a scarab beetle with a shell of iridescent teal and large golden wings fully stretched out as if in flight. This box was found empty, however, it was soon discovered that any items placed within it began to exude a powerful after effect, as if the box itself was a conduit of power. It is for this reason it has been used to carry such items as these. Inside you'll see one, two, three, four, and five miniature potion bottles. Inside, you'll see one, two, three, four, and five miniature potion bottles. Each closed with a piece of blessed cork, as well as a protective pentagram jar, to ensure not a drop escapes. Our first potion is called the Nectar of the Nile. You may find its sediments settled at the bottom like sand on a riverbed. However, with a good shake, the sediments should rise, giving the liquid creamy golden colour. The nectar of the Nile earns its name due to its ability to turn even the most dull and flavourless of dishes into a morsel fit for the gods. It is believed the high priests of Egypt once used this 
to dose the food offerings brought to the temples, allowing it to be consumed by their respective deities. Our second potion is titled Liquid Twilight. This purplish liquid was once weaponized by the great Lycan army to incur lycanthropic transformation at will. However, when correctly dosed, it can have other effects. For instance, adding one drop to any liquid will grant the drinker night vision for one night, or two drops for both night vision and the ability to run at speeds of over 40 miles per hour. However, be advised, microdosing for periods longer than three days may result in patchy body hair, the desire to urinate on trees and fleas. Our third potion is blood of the venomous Valen root. It may appear clear like water at first glance, but when shaken, it will reveal its true red colour. This liquid is only found in the death pools of the nether woods, where the valent tree lures its prey to drink from what appears to be a pool of water. However, upon disturbing the surface, the red venom secreted from the roots activates, turning the cool liquid deadly in an instant. A powerful poison to be sure, flavorless, scentless, and undetectable once it reaches the bloodstream. I'll let your imagination fill in the blanks for how this may be of use to you. Our fourth potion is this pumpkin spiced paraquat. This delicious smelling substance may confuse your senses with its warm notes of cinnamon, ginger, and clove. But it is in fact designed to be sprayed upon weeds. It works by inhibiting photosynthesis, causing the unwanted plant to wither, while the sweet smell attracts unwanted insects who will subsequently feast upon the infected foliage and likewise perish. And finally, last, but by no means least, is this parasitic possession slime. This one is a sort of purplish colour which means it's female. This species relies on a host for prolonged life, but can survive in water like this for up to six lunar cycles. Upon contact with an organic life form, the slime will liquefy being absorbed into the skin where it can travel through the bloodstream and take over the nervous system within a few minutes. The relationship between parasite and host 
then becomes a symbiotic one with a telekinetic link forming between both life forms. If you are open to its presence, you may enjoy benefits such as cell regeneration and an access to all the knowledge and memories of previous hosts. Unfortunately, those that attempt to remove this parasite will do so at great risk as the entity will draw out every minuscule fragment of iron from the blood along with them. This is what gives the slime its glittery appearance. So unleash this creature with great caution. Up next, we have this linen scarf said to have been hand-sewn by the elusive wood witch of Hangman's Hollow. This scarf has various symbolic artwork on it, which I will show you piece by piece. In the bottom corner here is a simple wood moth with orange and copper tones to remind us of the beauty in the simple things. In the next corner we have this beautiful Rusala emetica mushroom which while visually stunning is quite poisonous symbolizing the need for wisdom in all decisions. Next is this rust crescent moon with a small toadstool sprouting from its base which represents new beginnings. And finally this copper sun tightly bound in Ravenna vines. When the two appear together being that they are opposites, symbolize balance. Coming into the center here, you'll notice rust moons in various phases. And a variety of hand-stitched imagery within. strawberry plant for sweetness, wild fire blossoms for cold winter nights, hydra blooms infamous for their ability to grow a new flower head of a different species from each stem you cut. Passion poppies for their powerful aphrodisiac pollen, as well as various woodland flowers and herbs. A piece of tangerine quartz bound in cord with fur branches and passion poppies tied as well. And in the center, a spell known as Gaia's Garden, from which a conjurer will conjure a single vine from the palm of their hand, which can grow every fruit, berry, and herb required to survive in the wild. style and preference. 
adding a touch of woodland and autumnal charm to any outfit. It is said to increase the wearer's ability in the art of earth magic. It can be worn in the hair or around the neck for warmth, as well as pulled up over your nose and mouth. Should you need to rob the local passers-by for essentials, such as cheese or wine. Up next, we have the Shelf of Salem. mistaken for being our kind. The wood from which it is carved was whittled from the pyre upon which so many innocent lives were lost, giving this wood its blackened charcoal colour. The shelf features within it, as well as six small nooks for miniature objects and crystals encompassed within the shape of sun and crescent moon. Truly an ideal resting place for any potions, crystals, or trinkets of your choosing. Previous owners have experienced apparitions of women long since past wandering their homes. Though, despite their haunting disposition, have been known to tidy the home, bake fresh bread, and even charge the owner's crystals for them. in the form of this possessed wine. On the bottom here, you'll see a parchment label in warm autumnal tones. At the bottom is the silhouette of a woodland and a stack with magnificent antlers. is perched this deer skull above the words whale of the wendigo. On the reverse of the bottle is an old Navajo poem about the origins of this wine. It's faded with age, but I'll do my best to decipher it. It reads, where the woods are dark and paths are gone, you'll find them lurking here. When the living sleep, the dark things creep and fill the night with fear. The chilling screams will haunt your dreams with things no one should know. When from the night, you hear the wail of the cursed Wendigo. This wine in question is said to be nearly 300 years old. The story goes of a small Navajo village 
out in the woods of North America. It is said the villagers were plagued by the voices of dead loved ones out in the night and stalked by something tall and thin. One by one, men, women, and children were lost in the dark hours, till the elders gathered all the silver jewelry and utensils in the village and melted them down to make one single spear which at last felled this monstrosity. As it died, it turned back into a man, the spirit of the Wendigo, seeping from his lips like white smoke. It is said this is what was trapped in this very bottle, sealed with blessed wax, mixed powdered gold. This bottle has never been opened for fear of unleashing the ravenous entity within. Its value has only increased with time, despite the tales of wailing sounds coming from whatever cellar it's stored in. We have the Venus guide trap, nestled in a ceramic pumpkin mug with etched white foliage. Believed in many cultures to increase libido as well as fertility, this little baby has one, two, three, Seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven little heads of emerald green and mulberry purple. Venus guy traps grow quite rapidly. This one is only two weeks old. However, within a year, will likely reach between 10 and 12 feet in height and no doubt become your garden's best protection from intruders and nosy neighbors. It also doubles as a matchmaker, trapping eligible matches that might wander by and keeping them nestled within for you to decide whether or not they might catch your fancy. I remember my mother telling me the story of her Venus sky trap many years ago. She was busy at work, baking pumpkin loaf and mulling pear cider for the autumn equinox festival when she heard a muffled yelp and a gulping sound in the front garden. She donned her lace-up boots, wiping her hands on her black apron. She ventured out into the evening air, laced with the smell of burning firewood. There, heavily drooped, was her Venus sky trap's head, or one of them at least, struggling to keep its jaws shut as the wriggling contents fought fervently within. She tapped two fingers on its mighty purple head, causing it to unfurl, spewing a bewildered 
the creature onto the mossy pave. Not a neighbour, or even a pesky intruder, but a rather handsome looking vampire, with hair like obsidian and eyes like blue topaz. Two centuries have passed since then, and a dozen offspring later, and yet they're still as enamoured with one another as they were that very day. Up next, we have this wonderful mystery bag. This bag is made of rich boysenberry purple velvet and delicately hand painted upon it is this eight pointed star each point representing a quality to strive for beauty strength Passion, honor, humility, mirth, and finally, reverence. The gentle clinking within the bag may give you some hint as to its contents. Let's take a look. The design is made antique brass with pentagrams throughout to aid its protective magic. A piece of clear quartz hangs from the tip, leading down into a triple moon with pentagrams hanging, followed by three small brass bells. Now, you may have seen one of these hanging in your local spellcaster's den. However, as the autumn draws near, many shops, taverns, and traders will begin to hang these in their doorway. They are known simply as Bells of Sawen because of their use in the run-up to All Hallows Eve. Simply hang this by the front entrance of your home and it will prevent any spirits or entities that might seek to do harm from entering. The gentle chimes of the bell are believed to bring peace to those that hear them, and aid in clearing the air of any lingering hex magic. Our next offering is this rare and expensive bottle of lunar gin. It is only distilled under very specific conditions at a particular time of year, which naturally is reflected in the price. The bottle in question is forged of periwinkle glass, which is quite common in Fay distilleries, as it aids in the development of the spirit floral, and sweet notes. Moving on to this front label, you'll see a lunar theme is prevalent throughout the design. With a lunar mop at the base here, wrapping its wings around the bottle. Carved fragments 
of moonstone are embedded throughout the moth's wings and body, catching the light ever so gently, as well as whisper reeds that frame the artwork. These can only be found in the still water sea of the elven glade, which is also the birthplace of this gin. Coming up to the top, you'll see a piece of rose quartz bound around the bottle's neck and held in place by this piece of black walnut wood. It is intended that the crystal be placed under the pillow of the drinker for guaranteed dreams of bliss and a sense of warm comfort. Turning the bottle over, you'll see a fey poem describing the rare natural phenomenon required for this gin's creation. It reads, when the moon doth rise on a November night, and the waters are calm and still, the lunar moth awakens and takes to flight to come and drink their fill. For only here where the sirens swim in waters fresh and clear you'll find the sight on starry night that only happens here for as the dust of fluttering wings glides downward in the breeze the moon will rise and turn to glitter on the surface of the sea then the siren song, sung soft and long, turning innocence to sin, combines these three on the surface of the sea, from myrrh and moth and moon to gin. Personal favourite has been kindly sent to us by Accursed Confections in the form of this wonderful treat box. The box itself is hewn of this deep chocolate coloured wood with hand piped detail work reminiscent of icing to add to the overall deliciousness. At the top here, you'll see a six-pointed star with sprigs of pumpkin heather embedded in each point, as well as rosemary needles dotted here and there, and lemon clover leaves. At the centre is an all-seeing eye. sugar crystal. Coming down to the side panels, you may notice a different design piped on each, representing the sweets within. Let's take a look at the back. This box contains our four best sellers, Mermins, Quest Caramels, Shy Shrooms, and Beezleberry Bonbons. Let's open it up and take a look, shall we? Smell of vanilla and peppermint wafting in the air immediately. Inside, you'll see four of their sweets in various colours and shapes. Let's 
take a look at each of them a little bit closer. Assuming the light comes wrapped in fortified silver leaf with a turquoise fishtail painted on top to show its authenticity. The sweet inside is a peppermint cream coated in a thin crisp layer of dark chocolate balancing the refreshing intense center with the bitter sweetness of the shell mermaids and their name by the temporary effects caused by their consumption which include greenish purplish scales behind the ears as well as the ability to breathe underwater for one day cycle no particularly harsh side effects are expected Though some have reported awakening out of a trance, staring into a public aquarium and making the sound at the goldfish. Next, we have my personal favourite, the Quest Caramel. These delights come packaged in Fenwick paper which you may well want to keep a hold of. The image on the top will give some hint as to the sort of quest you may be embarking upon. For example, this one shows what appears to be three pine trees, which tells me the quest for this caramel involves being in the woods. The Fenwick paper is invaluable as it can be torn into small pieces and consumed for a very full stomach. This is useful when food is scarce and when quests run a little longer than intended. Inside is a piece of butter toffee with notes of vanilla and chai, all encased in a layer of creamy milk chocolate. Delicious enough tempt you to eat more than one at once, though we strongly advise against this, as it may result in a strange sort of hybrid quest which can be known to tear small holes in our reality. Our third sweet comes in the form of the shy shroom. This squishy red and white gumdrop is in fact the head of a real mushroom grown in the deepest reaches of hangman's hollow. They earn their name by the tendency to bury themselves down into the soil when they sense movement nearby. The mushroom caps have a flavour like pink gooseberries and cream and have the ability to turn even the most introverted creature into a confident bell of the ball as long as it is in their system. Side effects may include hiccups, rosy cheeks and the desire to bury oneself in the dirt. Our last delight is the infamous Beeselberry bonbon. This bonbon has been used in festivities for centuries for its ability to change the appearance of the consumer to anything their imagination can conjure up. For this reason, it has popularly been consumed on the night of All Hallows Eve. It has the texture and dexterity similar to bubblegum and is sweet 
fruity flavor on the pink side and a tart, citrusy note on the blue side. Through the years, many a tale has emerged of party goers encountering small children in costumes who offer them sweets but instead give them rocks. Some are said to find themselves tripping even when there is nothing to trip on, and others still have reported socks going missing in the night, but only the left one. Overall, a feeling of mischief is said to follow the consumer, until November 3rd, when the Day of the Dead has passed. Our final item, the skull of Zosimon. Originally found in the Cave of the Beasts, situated in the western deserts of Egypt. This skull dates back to 300 AD, when a man of Grecio egyptian descent set out to perform the transmutation of non-precious items into gold, desperate after years of failure. Zosimos approached a djinn, wishing to conjure pieces of gold as big as his head. Sadly, his own words would be his undoing, for no sooner had he uttered these words than did his head begin to ooze molten gold, ending his life in the millennia since. Alchemists have attempted to understand the transformative powers of the skull, mounting all sorts of attributes and levers to the skull. However, these have all turned to gold, as you can see. If you notice, I'm having to be very careful not to handle it with my skin, as it has already turned my nails to gold, as you can see. This artifact now has a reputation, much like the hand of Midas, for unknown reasons, the ruby and fire opal embedded in his cranium appear to be the only object impervious to its dark magic. Owners of the skull have reported visits in the night from a shadowy being offering them a single wish. However, dire consequences often ensue, leading to the death of each and every one of them. As you under a spell, then call the number below. That concludes our episode for tonight. Please be advised, we are not liable for any cases of cannibalism, hauntings, or swallowed neighbors that may occur. Such is considered the responsibility of the buyer upon purchase, and is therefore no grounds for refund or legal action. Thank you, as ever, for joining us tonight, and we wish you swift travels to the realms of dreaming. Good night.